Shalom, shalom, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is your host, Joyce Miller, and we are here to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, to pray for the peace of Israel. What a glorious day, and what an honor, what a privilege uh, to be here at this time, working with the living God and giving him authority on earth because he is, he has defeated our enemies, his enemies, and he is exalted, seated, seated at the right hand of God the Father in heavenly places. And according to Ephesians, by virtue of being in him, we are far above every principality, power, and every name that is named, seated in him. So we praise God, we praise God, we praise God. What a glorious day. Well, I'm going to get uh, give you a little update on what's going on in Israel where uh, we can we will pray over it and you will, if you would, just carry it in your heart and pray as you go throughout the weekend and the week until we meet again uh, next week. So praise God. Uh, I just want to thank everybody, though, before we get started. I, I, I am so grateful for every one of you. Uh, you know, I can't call every one of you and say thank you, but I, I do from the depths of my heart. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for uh, just your patience, your endurance uh, through these many, many days and years of praying for the peace of Jerusalem and praying for the peace of Israel. Uh, heaven takes note. I, I know we keep the uh, angels busy, uh, as and it is written down, and uh, I believe that there is great reward for it. So it is, it is God's summon uh, to us to pray for the peace of Israel. So praise God. Well, I want to just mention a couple things, and, and we're, again, where you can pray about them. Um, of course, um, some of the, it, these spirits seem to, you know, because I think of Daniel 10, it talks, you know, Daniel was praying and, uh, and it says that the, uh, that he, he, his prayers was, uh, was answered, but they were interrupted because of, uh, demon spirits, principalities that was over nations and, uh, 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 Gabriel said, "You know, I, I when you summons me, I was I was dispatched, but it took me twenty one days because I was warring with these other principalities. So we know that we're not fighting flesh and blood. We're dealing, and we need to be mindful of it because sometimes we think uh, that we're dealing with just natural things, but it is spiritual things." But Russia, um, I call him the Tsar, uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, is in Be Beijing. He left uh, on Thursday, and he is there meeting with Xi Jinping of China. And I, I, I don't know what they're up to, but uh, I would say it's up to what, you know, um, you know, plotting, planning uh, spirits uh, are, you know, usually do. But one of the things that concerns me, too, about this is, again, we know uh, from uh, the scriptures, the New Testament, that strife opens up a doorway for the enemy. And um, um, Israeli Defense Minister Gallant has aligned himself with the Biden administration against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government. The White House is trying to orchestrate the fall of, of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government. Um, and at the same time, he, he's doing that. He's saving Hamas and trying to create an international force to rule Gaza. Uh, the strife has come because of, uh, uh, of actually the disclosure of what Benjamin Netanyahu has been, it's like he's been, uh, again, the statesman that he is. He's not putting all of his, uh, you know, cards on the table, so to speak. He's been withholding because people have asked him, what's the future of Gaza? 
Are you know Israel going to take back over? Is the Palestinians going to run it, et cetera, et cetera? And you know the Biden administration wants to place uh, Gaza under an international umbrella, and um, it, all of this beef, so to speak, or the rift between the in the war cabinet and the defense minister and others is the day after plan for Gaza. And uh, all the interim, of course, uh, 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 Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, has said, we're going into Gaza, and which he has done, and he is taking out all of Hamas. And, you know, the, you know that, the, their reasoning is, well, they, they, they have no more armaments. They have no more, uh, you know, uh, reserves to bring up this last little Sebastian. And it, it sounds like Saul over in the Old Testament to me, uh, you know, when God said go into a particular, you know, area and kill all of this because of the corruption of the gene pool, so to speak. But uh, uh, Saul didn't, you know, and he had to face Ahab in another day, you know, because he was a, a descendant of the ones he didn't, he didn't uh, um, uh, kill. So anyway... Uh, that is uh, something that definitely needs continued prayer. Also, the uh, Hezbollah uh, in the north has has beefed up. And they have been going, uh, you know, uh, after Israel ever since October seventh. There was been the war in the south, which is Gaza with Hamas, but Hezbollah in Lebanon. And um, I, I read a briefing from, from Amir Safardi the other day that says, you know, he's, uh, you know, uh, it was early morning still. He said Hamas, not Hamas, but Hezbollah had already sent a hundred rockets into Israel. And he is there in the Galilee, in the northern area. And evidently he's not planning on moving and he's not planning on on uh, being wiped out because he is building a big, uh, what they call a television studio called the Impact Center, and where all the uh, the goings on is going to be telecast all across the world. So he's not planning on uh, going any place, and that's according to the scriptures. I love it because I was I was over you know reading this morning over in Amos the very last verse in the book of Amos in Amos nine. Verse fifteen. When I was looked at that impact center, it's called it's called Connect. Uh, anyway, he's going to connect to the world. The world, to what is going on in Israel? And it says uh, the very last verse in Amos nine fifteen. It says, "I will plant them." Uh, he uh, prefaces in verse fourteen. I'll bring back the exiles of my people, and they'll build the waste cities and inhabit them and plant vineyards and gardens, and eat the fruit of them. I will plant them in their own land, and they will no more be torn up out of the land which I gave them, saith the Lord. So in other words, they're there to stay. And um, evidently, Amir Sephardi is posturing for that. So though the hour is late, what is going to be televised will be televised, you know. Um, you know, I, I don't think that he'll be, probably be there, but... I know that, you know, I mean, how, how is it if you lived at the turn of the century, even 1948 or 1946 or whatever, and you read in the book of Revelation that the whole world would see the two witnesses there in Jerusalem during the tribulation? Yeah, I mean, you know, your mind would go tilt. How can that be? Or, you know, before there was worldwide satellite, because there wasn't. I, I remember the big, big, big deal in the, I think it was the late 80s, that where Kenneth Copeland, um, they, uh, Clyde McGee uh, with Hughes Aircraft uh, worked on what they called uh, these satellites. And his wife was a prayer. And her his wife, Martha, and, you know, uh, she would say, we keep praying during prayer. We keep praying for the birdies. He says, what? And uh, she says, yeah, the birdies. We're always praying for the birdies. He says, that's what we call the satellites. And so these satellites that were positioned around the world, I participated in a worldwide communion uh, from uh, went to uh, to uh, Texas 
actually Kenneth Copeland was hosting it and and uh, my brother was uh, asked to be uh, head of 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 uh, Ga uh, it wasn't Galveston it was someplace else but anyway um, and uh, Paul Young Yi Cho from Seoul Korea there was somebody in Europe and in South Africa uh, you know and we all took communion together around the world so when you think about the book of Revelation and that the whole world is going to see these two witnesses and they're just going to give the you know the Antichrist a fit and then uh, in, in three days, <clears throat> they, he, he's going to kill them. And then on the third day, they're going to raise up and be caught up to heaven. And every eye is going to see it, it says. How are they going to do that? I know. Because of, you know, things like this, this connect. But most probably it'll be CNN. So anyway, that was meant to be a laugh. But anyway, uh, another thing that's happening is the, uh, uh, it was reported with the uh, Israeli uh, guys that the U.S. peer, the peer that uh, Biden has uh, constructed off the coast of Gaza that cost a couple of uh, million, hundred million dollars, um, you know, there uh, is to the, the discussion has been for humanitarian aid to get in there. But you, I, I, I see pictures all the time of the Sikh and the markets completely flooded with people. And it wasn't yesterday's, uh, it wasn't last year's picture. It was last, you know, last week and, and this week's pictures of people with plenty of food. And because humanitarian trucks, they're, there, there are hundreds of trucks going in there. And uh, anyway, uh, this pier that Biden has uh, constructed off the coast of Gaza for humanitarian aids, um, it, it's, it's really doubtful that it's needed. But uh, anyway, uh, the U.S. is interested. Uh, this is one of the things that I found quite interested is that the, some of the, and you've heard this, the, the Biden plan it has leaked that uh, to bring the asylum seekers from Gaza, the Palestinians, to America. And that's what we're seeing, you know, a lot of in uh, all of our universities and, you know, and communities is these uh, jihadists that is just absolutely it's absurd, you know, that uh, that he would even think this. And even at a press conference yesterday, um, they were uh, there was a uh, asked about um, uh, this uh, asylum seekers. Would the uh, uh, Biden administration take them? And and it was said that there were eight hundred of asylum seekers, or uh, that were American Palestinians that was brought to the United States at the after the beginning of the war. So here it is. It's disclosed. They didn't uh they didn't go into any details, said just go and you know, if you want uh to the reporter, go to the uh 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 uh, uh ask the government, in other words, other than than me. So Anyway, so they are bringing Palestinians, and I think one of the purposes of that, and it was alluded to by the Israeli guys, that this is one of the purposes of this peer, it because the, the reporter asked if Palestinians came uh, to that peer and said to America, uh, I, I would like asylum, would you take them? And they, he, she, she directed them to the State Department. So... In essence, that's exactly what, that's a back door of doing what they want. But we call, you know, again, God said that Israel will be put in the land and there will, they will not be. He said, I'll plant them in their own land and they will no more be torn up out of the land that I give them. So we pray Isaiah 54, 17, again, no weapon. No weapon from the north, no strategy, plot, plan, undercover, 
plan of uh, the Biden administration or any other. Every voice, Father, you said in your word that no weapon formed against them prospers. Every tongue that rises up against them in judgment will be shown to be in the wrong. And we, you said this was the vindication, that your vindication for them. And so we thank you for it, Father, in the name of Jesus. God is so good. He is so good and he's moving, he's moving, he's moving. You know, last week we talked about all of the wars that Israel has been in. And they will win this one too. Uh, it is, you know, they have discovered at Rafa, which I'm sure, you know, uh, uh, was whether they knew about it or not or disclosed it. But on the Rafa, uh, at the last bastion at the southern end on Egypt's border, they have discovered so far over 70 tunnels and 50 of those go into Egypt. So they could smuggle people, foods, armaments, etc. And so they, this they have uh, found uh, that this is what uh, it is showing. But the word of God, they have won all these other wars. They have survived. Really, this is the 13th war that they have been in since the, um, the beginning of the state. And I, I like the scripture over in Zechariah 12, 6 and 8. It says, In that day, I'll make the clans of Judah like a fiery labor among the pieces of wood and a fiery torch among the sheaves so that they will consume on the right hand and on the left all the surrounding people. While Jerusalem will again be inhabited in its own place, and in that day, Yeshua will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the house of David will be like God, like a, the angel of Yahweh before them. The, in other words, that, that it, they will be like David and Goliath, that the Goliaths are going to fall. So how how is it? You know, Iran shot 331 missiles on April 14th, and 99% of them was stopped. And even uh, the uh, physicist that actually was a part of that and the study of it, and he said, he wrote to his rabbi, it's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. How could 99% when even the projection uh, of it is, you know, uh, the security, the ones who develop missiles and, and, and the equipment and all the, you know, he said it mathematically, it's impossible. How is it impossible? Because of God. And, and he said, you know, he said, I'll, 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 I'll make you like David and Goliath. How David was wasn't it wasn't his prowess it wasn't his statue it wasn't it was his covenant with God and that's what stood he says he he asked Goliath he says you come at me with a sword and a spear you know he said who is this uncircumcised Philistine that comes at me with a, a sword and a spear I come to you in the name of the Lord that's it the name of the Lord. He is He is our defense. He is Israel's defense. And God's word will forever. It's ever settled. He is a covenant keeping God. He watches. It's like he can't keep his eyes off of Israel. But the thing about it is he can't keep his eyes off of Israel, but he can't keep his eyes off of the ecclesia also. That's you and me. We have covenant. We have a, a relationship it is, it is called Hasid. It is obligatory love. Uh, it, 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 it's his DNA. There's no way else that God can, can respond. Um, but defend Israel and defend you and, and I because he will watch over his word to perform it in our lives. He is a faithful God, trustworthy God, a high tower, a refuge. He is substance. When there is, is when there is no way, he is the way. So what a God we serve. And and 
in the midst of all of this, you know, I, I know that Israel is coming to a place of, of a bended knee. And it, uh, I, I, was, I was reading also this morning in Hosea 5, 15, about the restoration of Israel. So where you, know, you might ask, Joyce, what is tomorrow going to be like for Israel? What's it going to be like for us? And what's going, to ha- what's going to happen? There's going to be war in Israel. There, is, there, there might be some uh, reprieve. Uh, you know, a calculation of time of, of rearming or whatever. But the fight is on. Satan hates the Jews. They are witnesses uh, uh, of our God, that our God is God, and he's not. And he wants to exalt himself, he, he, you know, above the throne of God. And he says, I will, I will, I will, I will. But I tell you, he won't, he won't, he won't. Which I will will end in defeat. And, and that's been that way from the beginning. He's tried to annihilate mankind. He's tried to annihilate the Jews because the Messiah was going to come. He tried to kill babies from and, and, and you know from, from the garden. He was he you look you do a study on how babies have been uh this innocent. Uh, Satan is not he he his whole game is a house of cards and he wants to deceive and he's after the innocent and the ignorant he has no power he has to use yours and 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 we're just not going to give it to him in Jesus name but uh over in Hosea of uh 515 it says i will uh i will return again to my place and let me read this out of I want to I, I want to read it out of um, uh, excuse me just a second well I I won't it takes too time too long okay anyway he's here's God talking he says I will return again to my place he says till they acknowledge till they acknowledge their offense then they will seek me. They will seek my face, and in their affliction, they will diligently seek me. So, this is really the purpose of the tribulation. That's the reason why. The per, uh, once you read the, and study the book of Revelation, you find that the church is raptured in chapter 4. Jesus t- takes the, the earth deed, the title deed to the earth. And he starts usurping or, or evicting the usurper from the earth at the end of the sixth day. And so, you know, uh, then chapter six in the book of Revelation, really the fireworks or the eviction starts going on. The, uh, and the guerrilla warfare, so to speak. Uh, but he says here that, that Israel will acknowledge their offense. And that is their offense is that they rejected Jesus. And Jesus over in Matthew 23, he sits, you know, I, oftentimes I, I think of, of that picture of Jesus sitting on the mount, uh, mountain side and looking over Jerusalem and weeping over Jerusalem because they stoned the prophets, the, the men, the women, that he sent to them to, you know, to tell them that he was coming. And in, in Matthew 23, verse 27, he said, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophet and stones those who sent her, how often I wanted to gather you, uh, your children together, as a hen would gather their chicks under her wings, but you would not. You were not willing. See that your house will be left desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me uh, no more till you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And one day he will, uh, they will, according to uh, Zechariah, Zechariah 
says that they will repent and they will cry out. And many of them are actually coming to the Lord. Uh, There's been reports that the synagogues have been filled in Israel. People coming back, uh, you know, and crying out uh, unto the Lord. And over in the book of Zechariah, chapter 12, it says, um, in that day, it's talking about that day is the, um, the tribulation. It will, you know, it's, it shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations who come against you, Jerusalem. But in chapter, I mean, verse 10, it talks about the spiritual salvation of Israel. And it says, I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. And they will look on me whom they have pierced. They will mourn for him as one who mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one who grieves for his firstborn. In that day, there will be a great mourning in Jerusalem, like the mourning of Hadad Ramin in the uh, plain of Megiddo. In other words, all the families, it says that the, the land will mourn. Every family, uh, uh, they will, the wives will be by themselves. The men will be by themselves. The family will be, be by themselves. And they, all the families that remain, uh, every family by itself and the wives by themselves. And they will cry out unto the Lord and he will save them. That, if you want to make a note of it, that is the fulfillment of Yom Kippur. That is the Day of Atonement. When they cry out and repent, Jesus comes back. They will repent of their rejection of him because of the revelation that Yeshua is the Messiah. He visited Israel once and he is coming again. So praise God, praise God. So let's just pray for a moment. I've given you a lot to pray about. I hope you take notes. Uh, it, it is my heart that what I know, you will know. And not only just know, but share it with your family, your sphere of influence, your church, your your prayer group. Be the light in the midst of the darkness. Don't put your light under a bushel. As Matthew said, show forth that which you know. And because I, it's taken many, many years for me to understand and put a lot, connect a lot of these dots together. And it's not just for me, it's for you also. So, Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we give you thanksgiving for today. We thank you for your word that illuminates our darkness. And even as Daniel of old prayed, that which is hidden, we are calling and making a demand on it. That we may walk in lightness and in everywhere we go, we can share and illuminate that which we know. And we thank you for the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth. We don't want error. And we thank you that Israel will not fall into error. But you will prevail this day. And we ask, Father for unity in that war cabinet, unity in the government, unity in the synagogues, unity and a heart that are that which you said, that you would pour out a spirit of supplication and grace, that they would truly worship you in the spirit of true in the spirit and in truth. So we thank you, Father, for what you're doing. Thank you for the leading of 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 knowing what to do and how to do it that Issachar anointing father upon Benjamin Netanyahu and all of the other leaders down to the privates father we are asking you every mother every father every uh, every uh, school uh, every shiva every place that they come together we are asking for illumination light into the dark places, revelation like never before. And we thank you for it, Father. Thank you for the outpouring of your spirit. And also, Father, I thank you and I bless these people 
that are, are joining in and laboring with you in this last hour. You said that we were co laborers in your plans and your purposes, and we give you praise. And I thank you that you will bless them as they've taken up your cause, that you will take up theirs in every situation that they find themselves confronted with. Satan, you're bound and rendered helpless and ineffective in the name of Jesus. Take your hands. You take your hands off Israel. You take your every plan, plot, every strategy, especially in the Biden administration. Father, even uh, even utterance for these senators and these representatives uh, that have risen up against the Biden plan to withhold armaments and aid and assistance to Israel. Father, we thank you for your plans. You're, according to Job 42.2, said, there is nothing impossible to you. And your plans can no longer be hindered or thwarted in any shape, form, or fashion. So we give you thanksgiving for it. And we praise you for it. We rejoice in your faithfulness. We rejoice in your faithfulness, Father. You are our high tower, our refuge, and Israel too. So we thank you this day as we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, That your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And soon this earth will know that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords, and all will bow their knee to him. We say as at one voice this day, come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for joining me today. I bless you one and all, and I'll look forward to next Friday on our prayer call for the priests of Jerusalem. God bless you. One.